Jim, uh, it's first of all, it's not a scenario of, of, of John Kennedy's assassination uh, in the sense that uh, possibly my first book was, the one that came out in 1970. It, uh, it is thoroughly fiction. Uh, on the other hand, it is based on the a situation which could develop uh, in the American intelligence community as it operates today with uh, almost unfettered power. And uh, so if, if that's what you surmise uh, from what you've heard about it, that's correct. But it's not, it's not a scenario of any previous No, um, I think that uh, history uh, will do that. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, worried about that. I, I didn't work on this novel for, for two years to try and uh, obtain vindication or justification. I was interested in, in uh, uh, writing a novel because I enjoy writing, and it happens to be in a genre that interests me, that the, mm -hmm. uh, you might say, the, the suspense intrigue field, which the English have dominated so many years with Graham Greene and, and Eric Ambler, and I thought it was time for an American uh, to, to write a an espionage novel, the one about Washington, and that was in the last year, especially. Mm -hmm. Let me answer it in two parts, Jim, if I can. First of all, nine years ago, this past February, I said three things, essentially. I said that it was apparent that the Central Intelligence Agency was extensively engaged in domestic espionage. I said, secondly, that it was apparent that the CIA was in the murder business. And I said, third, that it was also apparent that a part of the CIA was involved in the murder of President Kennedy. Now, in the last year, the CIA has admitted being extensively involved in domestic espionage, and they've in, admitted being in, involved in, in the murder. Central America, Latin America worked closely with the CIA, so New Orleans was an important city for the CIA. We found, as we dug into Lee Oswald's background in New Orleans, everybody connected with him, we found, ultimately, that Nobody was associated with Lee Oswald who was not one way or the other connected with, with, with the intelligence structure, whether it was a um, contract employee of the CIA like Dave Ferry or Clay Shaw, as we know from Victor Marchetti, who brought that out last year, Richard Helms' former assistant, but uh, all the way down to the part-time employees of Cube, the anti-Castro adventurers who were employed by the Central Intelligence Agency. So it was a case of our having bumped into so many, one after the other, that this very group of people, as we began to look at them after a year and, and put them in perspective with regard to their function, we began to realize we were dealing with the Central Intelligence Agency. Uh, there was yes. no other rest. Yes, but it's uh, almost any case that you, you would develop against the part of the intelligence community would be a circumstantial case because uh, uh, people usually don't voluntarily say anything about uh, the intelligence agency because uh, they prefer to know Castro's life. But if, if I may, let me put it in the perspective uh, where I think it belongs. First of all, when I speak of the Central Intelligence Agency in connection with the murder of John Kennedy, and again, that's not a part of my new novel. Mm -hmm. The Star Spangled Contract is a new novel. But with regard to John Kennedy's murder, the Central Intelligence Agency was not involved as a structure, as an organization. That would be a mistake, and I think it would be irresponsible to, to hold forth that theory. That's not my position at all. But it did become apparent that a part of the Central Intelligence Agency was employed. Now, with regard to the phrase, a part, the agency is made up of it's a, it's a mansion which consists of many houses, but an important part of it from the Bay of Pigs and thereafter were what you might call the alumni of the Bay of Pigs, these adventurers that, uh, that uh, felt so strongly about regaining Cuba, mm -hmm. and many of them were Americans. Now, from these people, the assassination teams were formed, but the important thing to understand that is glossed over is that these particular assassination teams, to the last man at the tactical level, had come to hate John Kennedy every bit as much as Castro, because they blame him for the Bay of Pigs' failure. I might answer it this way, with regard to the novel that we're talking about, uh, The Star-Spangled Contract, even though that's fiction, and it's not a JFK scenario. Nevertheless, at, while I hope to entertain the reader, at the same time, 
I am trying to give him insights with regard to the reality of our intelligence community and what it's doing to this country.